Hi guys, I am Ayodele Olorufumi and you're welcome to my channel. Today we'll be talking about something different. We'll be taking a different approach. Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys my real life experience. I'm going to be talking about my experience of Aquaibom State. The land of promise, they say. But is it really the land of promise? You're just about to find out. Don't go nowhere, I'll be back. So you're welcome back guys. You're going to be learning a lot on this particular episode of Learn with Abaga where I'm going to be sharing with you my experience of Aquaibom State. The people where I meet, where I go, Aquaibom, that the their food if is sweet like they always say, particularly that they are up and soup where they talk say it's good. Now through through say it's good and they are guys where they talk where they get that thing. Now through through say they get them. Now all these things when we are going to tell you on this show. So all you are going to need to do is just to relax yourself as me I explain how it be when I go acquire the A, the B, the C of Aquaibom State, they are kosher, that they are Ujuju Kalababi, they talk, now through through say it happen, so all these things, they say Aquaibom people, they job people, now through I be in a force, my experience, whether it happen, I be, it don't happen, now all these things, me I go to tell you for this show, all the things you go need to do, now just to sit down, enjoy, as me I explain, my experience of Aquaibom State. Yeah, everything started back in the year 2018, April 19th to be precise. Although before then I've lived with a couple of acquired bombites while I was growing up in Ijebuife. At least I know of Mr. Basi, Mama Kaite and our children alongside our husband. So I, I already know their lifestyle, their, their way of life, their language in particular. That is what enticed me. You know, I so much like that, their language, but I don't really know how to speak and then I didn't really know much of the language, although it sounds nice while, while you listen. So I really wanted to know much about the state, about the people, about their culture. So that was why when we were asked to choose about four of the states we would like to be posted to while registering for our NYC. Bomb was the first state I chose because I really wanted to go. Unfortunately for me, that was the state I was posted to. So like I said, the whole journey started out on the 19th of uh, April 2018. So I had to go to Ibadan before then because there's no way I would be able to get a Bomb bus in Djibouti. So I decided to go to Ibadan to go and take the bus that would take me to a Bomb state direct so before then a day before i had to go to ibadan because i had a friend so i had to sleep over at my friend's place on a go bless you so she accommodated me and uh, at around 6 a.m on the 19th of april april 2018 you know we we started the journey we woke up as early as possible went to the park but unfortunately, I didn't know there was a KTC park. Instead, we went to God is Good, and on getting there, the crowd was much. And before I could get a ticket, all tickets were sold out, and I, I became worried. So after a lot of back and forth, somebody told us to go to a KTC park. So although we had difficulty in getting the park, but eventually we got the park. When we got to the park, all tickets were sold out again. It became a problem and, you know, I was worried. I needed to go to Aquabom that day, you know, people were already in camp. So I sat down and I saw people coming in from different angle, prospective core members, PCM like myself, you know. We were waiting for because those people the the boss official told us to wait that they were there's a chance to, they will get us a boss that will take us so we were patient so at around 8 30 a.m in the morning they finally got us a senna bus so when the senna came instead of paying about five thousand for the least you know boss 
we we had to we had to pay seven thousand five hundred naira. But well, who cares? That day I just wanted to get to acquire them. You know, I could go any lane, I could do anything just to get to acquire them because I could I could no longer wait. I just wanted to go. So everybody rallied around and then we were able to pay. We we boarded the the Siena. We sat down. Although not all PCMs were, were going to acquire them, some were going to Abia State, while some were going to Delta. So I think we were about um, 10 of us or 11, I can't remember, in the Siena. So at around 9.05 a.m., our Siena bus finally took off in Nibado. At that point, I was happy, like, wow, finally. I'm going to acquire them, the land of promise you know but on one side i was sad you know i was angry why because number one i was hungry and they say an hungry man is an angry man and also i didn't really have much on me you know when you want to go to the camp like that you're supposed to be loaded so as to be able to you know enjoy yourself but of course i was hopeful money will come because I've seen promises here and there. But then we we started joining from Ibadan. We enter Ijebu from Ijebu. We enter Ore. So immediately we enter Ore. I couldn't hold that hunger any longer. And me, when I travel like that, I don't really like you know buying stuffs, most especially carbonated drinks, because they turn my belly. But on this occasion, I couldn't hold it because I was I was really really hungry so I had to buy Pepsi and a gala. I took it, I was fine, I was enriched, my energy was back and vitality. So uh, the journey continued but before then I wasn't talking to anybody, I was just on my own. But immediately I took that, I had a bit of energy and I noticed in the Senna bus we are about uh, seven ladies, four guys. So there was this pretty lady sitting next to me, although I didn't even, I wasn't looking because my aim was just to get to acquire bomb, meet people, and the likes. So although the, the Pepsi and the gala I took wasn't really enough, but at least it was able to sustain me as the journey continued. So our journey continued from uh, Ore, which in which was in Ondo State, we entered Edo from Edo, we entered Delta. So the guys that were going to Delta, they dropped and they went their way. And finally, we were able to get a restaurant. I think it was Amarashuku, I don't know, I can't remember the name. So we stopped by the restaurant, we, we, we ate. Finally, I was able to get you know, a solid food. I ate apple with Egusi soup. And if you see how meat were dancing in, in the in my plate of soup, you know, it was it was delicious. I, I'm not gonna lie. It was really nice, really, really nice. And I think I bought the plate of food for about 500 naira. And then we continued our journey. So at this point in time, I had the energy as our boss moved. And I would notice that fine black skin girl that was sitting next to me. I asked her, her name and she responded. She, I realized she, she was a Yoruba girl from the University of Ibadan. I think she was from Washington State, I can't recall. Outside talking, I needed to talk to someone. So I was talking to her. I got to know her and I've, although I've forgotten her name, I can't recall. So our journey continued from Delta, we entered Anambra after crossing the Niger Bridge. After we got to Anambra, from Anambra, our journey continued again. Then we got to Imo. You know, we were moving to Imo and I realized the distance with which we traveled in Imo State, I think it was the longest. We traveled within Imo for about three hours and I think it is because their road was so tiny and you know 
and the road wasn't really good and also we stopped and search that we, because at the point we got to a place where we were stopped and uh, by the nigerian army and uh, i realized they were they were having the biafran flag and i was shocked like hey god hey and at that point ipop was 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 really hurting up in the southeast so asked all of us to to come down check us we told them we are call members say you people are not call members you people are prospective call members so after about 15 minute delay you know they finally allows, allowed us to go so we continued the journey then from Imo state we go to Abia state where from my map because i was i was actually checking the map the one i have on my phone you know i checked and i realized okay we, we, are, we are just we are moving closer and closer so immediately we got to Abia state you know we wasted about um, 10 15 i mean 5 10 minutes there for them to drop and uh, because there was an order you know in Abia state so once we dropped we continued our journey this time around it was 2 9 i think it was it was around 8 30 yeah we got to Abia so when they dropped by we continued the journey and then at that point almost all the pcms in the bus they were all asleep it was as if i was just the only one that was awake because i i don't like sleeping when i travel like i said earlier so we continued the journey and so finally at around 10 pm at night we got to obotakara local government in a quiet room state and once i saw that on a signpost i was happy finally i am in the land of from it so we continue the journey from uber to Kalu government to enter the kotek mene then from the mene we kept moving and moving and finally we got to itam park in uyo in a quiet state although the driver told us he was going to carry us to the nyc orientation camp in in Sierra Thai local government, but on getting to Oyo at around 10 30 pm, if I'm not mistaken, he said he, 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 he wouldn't be able to continue the journey, so he had to, you know, put us in the Keke Marwa, and it was that Keke Marwa that took us to the NYC orientation camp in, in Sierra Thai local government of Aquarium State. So it took us from Itam Park in Uyo to the orientation camp in Insula Thai. Took us about 30, 40, I think it took about 40 minutes. And at this point, you know, acquired one way that it was raining heavily as we were moving from Uyo to Insula Thai. The rain was heavy and uh, I was I was partially drenched with water. That's why the fact that I was sitting, I was seated in a keke. So as we approached in Sierra Thai orientation camp, the rain already subsided and well, we were dropped outside of the gate and I saw people getting their buckets. I finally got mine too because like, if you don't have a bucket, you won't be able to buy blah, 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 blah. So I got one at the gate. And at that point, it was like the, the, the soldiers were tired of searching because I, I had they will search your bag you know, before you enter the camp. But at this point, they didn't go search us. It was like we were tired. So we just entered into the camp on search and I got into the camp finally in Syria Thai camp. You know, I saw core members on the white white, you know, why some were just coming just like us. They were on Mufti. And they were moving in one direction and i was like ah, where are these people going so i had to move close to, to one guy to ask guy how far what's the happen okay because at that point i was really really tired what i was just thinking was where to sleep okay let me just see a, a foam now and just crash you know it was all i wanted to do at that point so when i met that guy and he told me okay people were going to that direction just to go and get their phone so they would have the places so i followed them i dropped my bag and i finally followed them so when i got there i realized it was it was not easy you know 
to get the form, you have to drag, to fight, you know, to push. Well, I joined them because at that point, all I wanted to do was just sleep. So after struggling and struggling, I finally got one flat-footed, one dirty, slippers-like foam. But who cares? All I just wanted to do was lay my head and sleep. So when I finally laid my hand on a foam, I, I collected the foam and I was searching for an oyster to, to, just to put the foam so, so that I will be able to sleep. So the first hostel I entered was Good Luck Jonathan Hostel. Oh boy, when I entered into that hostel, God, see crowd. The heat that was oozing from that hostel, it was, you know, it was, it was killing. So I had to leave, you know, gently. I carried my bag with my 34. I left the place, you know. I came outside, I saw people moving to another hostel. I followed them, but on getting there, it was Monday or Thursday. At that point, I didn't really know. In as much as I could see a, an empty bunk, I got in. The people were many. I saw an, I saw some empty bunk. So I dropped my phone on a particular bunk. Once I dropped it, brought out my breast bread and my cover clothes, laid my hand, my head on the phone, covered my body. I slept like in the, a baby. Not until 4 a.m. I was able to open my eye. In fact, it was the movement of the my fellow call members that woke me. I saw them. Meaning I opened my eyes around 4 a.m. So they move it. Up and I said, where are these people going? They want so. So I called the guy next to me. I said, Alpha, where are these people going? So they are preparing to to bath because early in the by 5:30. You know they have to go to parade and i was like well i thought it was the, those people that have already registered and they were on white and white those are the ones that will participate i didn't know that i was feeling myself so but uh, when i saw them stood i i actually woke up to i took my bucket to go and get water so i'm getting to the tap i saw the crowd that was there and the water wasn't even rushing so i had to come back Beg that guy to give me one sachet water so that I'll be able to brush my teeth. So I brushed my teeth, I went back to sleep only to open it <laughs> and saw a soldier standing. <laughs> and I saw a soldier standing there by my bunk and asking us to vacate to the, the room and go and join them at the parade. Well, what would I do? I woke up. I left my bag because I, I, at that point I was tired to even drag any bag. I went out, saw people, you know, some guys, you know, shouting, Hillary phone charging, Esther phone charging, Amaka phone charging. So you expect me now, I don't know you, I don't know your shop. So you expect me to give you my phone so you charge, so that you can, you can, you know, just go away with my phone. It's not going to happen. Although my battery was low, but I wasn't going to take that risk. So I just left and I, I joined them at the parade and they did the early morning worship. They did the prayer and um, at that point I was feeling dizzy. Why? Because my stomach was rumbling, my eye, they turned me, belly, they turned me. And I realized it was because of the Pepsi that I took earlier. So at that point, I just needed to, to ease myself. I needed to go to the toilet because although at first I told myself, yes, I could cope, okay, after this parade, or after the whole thing, I'll go to the toilet. But it got to a point, I couldn't even try to hold it any longer. So I approached one soldier and told him what I was going through. He allowed me, he said, okay, you're giving five minutes, just go and come back immediately. So I rushed. At that point, I was holding it. So I'm getting to the toilet. The toilet was so dirty, but who cares? There was no water, at least. Let me just, you know, ease this tension. On. But I was lucky. The people taking care of the toilet, the cleaners were there already. They were already fixed. So the one they've cleaned, I just rushed in. And what I heard was, 
Oh boy. Ah, it was it was it was something else. So once I was done, I realized my stomach was empty. You know, it was as if all my intestines were taken away. So once I dropped it, I stomped out of the toilet, you know. After I took my bucket to go and get water, I flushed and I left to join them at the Parigan. So on getting to the Parigan, they were almost done and uh, we were dismissed. And the people that were they, they haven't registered, they told us to go sit down at the pavilion so we attended to. So on getting to the pa pavilion, I realized I was feeling empty, like there was absolutely nothing in my stomach. I needed to see something but there's no way you'll be able to eat something except you go to the mommy market but I, I was able to lay my hands on a guy selling Nescafe and um, I bought Nescafe a cup I think it's around 200 or 250 I can remember then I bought Mangala so I took it I was a bit filled you know, because at that point I couldn't eat something heavy because of the experience I had in there so I took the Nescafe with the gala and um, I was seated at the pavilion expecting them to attend to me, you know, we were much. So they were calling, they, they gave us a number and we were moving and they checked my, my, my stuff, my document and I was able, I was attended to, but <laughs> one thing I, I, I learned is all those people that say uh, they will accept any kind of um, medical report. Now I lie you, if you are going, make sure you do the original because you get, if you do the fake one, you get found out. Me, before I came, I, I had both the original and the fake. At first, I did the fake because I didn't want to spend money, but it got to a point. I told myself, what if I get caught and I will now have to go and spend over board just because I want to get the original. So, People that did the fake, they were they, they got found out and they, they actually asked them to sit in one corner. Thereafter, they took them out of the camp to go and do the original in the general hospital. So what I'm saying in essence is I did the original medical uh, report and and I was attended to immediately without even, you know, without any full, uh, prolonged checking. So they attended to me, checked everything necessary, item printed, and um, I was given the state code. And um, we were asked to go and meet our platoon leader because at that point I was, I was in, they get, I was in platoon too because the number that ended my state code was two. So they, I was asked to go and meet our platoon leader. So I moved, and when I got there. Uh, at that point, what we have to go and do there is do the remaining documentation then. At that point, they will give us our uniform, our belt, jungle boots, and uh, the necessary things. Okay, I'm getting to our platoon with that. I saw this fine, young looking lady. She wasn't medium size. I think she was short, but she was she was pretty. I'm going to, that much I can tell you. She was pretty and she was rumpy and so I'm getting there, I realized she looked like someone I knew and um, I look at her face, she, she, of course she knew I was looking at her so and um, I checked, I picked her fire and I realized the surname was even the same with the person I thought she resembled, you know, and I was like she, probably she, she, she was a sister to the person. So I approached her, I asked her, where are you from? Are you from so, 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 are you from Ocean State? She said, yes. And you, where do you reside? Do you reside in Lagos? She said, yes. Are you a sister to this person? She said, no. I said, really? You people look alike. How come? So from there, I, had, I, borrow, I borrowed that pen and I got to know her. But, you know, prior to my going to the camp, I already told myself, you know, all I needed to do was just meet people. There's no dating because I would like dating in three weeks. She can't rubbish date with that one. There's, I, I didn't want to get myself involved, you know. All I wanted to do was just go there, 
meet people you know get to meet people from different backgrounds different states different you know ethnic group and that was all i wanted to do but at that point i realized i was look i was losing focus i told myself i am focus but the, this year was just pretty you know i needed to at first i wanted to get another i was like oh, come on ayo this is all the plan focus focus so when well, i focused and i got my my stuff my jungle boots my khaki and the rest so i went to my hostel to go and to go check i checked and i realized everything was sitting there except for the jungle boot it was small so i came back my plan was hopefully i'll be able to see that babe again you know but getting there i realized she was gone but i was able to change my boots and i told myself ah and you're, this is not a plan you have to focus no big girl you can't find for camp eh no big girl you can't learn something for a year so yeah, after I left and I told myself I'm not going to do anything so I, I was able to change my jungle boat with someone else so I took it and I left for my hostel I changed to my white and white and um, once I was done changing I went to the pavilion getting to the pavilion it was filled I had no place to even put my foot I had no place to stand I had to go back you know they did everything necessary from there i went to the mami market to go and have you know a proper food but on getting there you know the experience was bad the the, the food was cold in fact the soup the they are they are they are so-called afang soup i didn't even taste it i had to you know return it and i took rice with stew and um, i came back to my house there then the following day, on stepping out, you know, I was already accustomed to the way the camp works. So early morning, I, I woke up with them, dragged just to make sure I, I go water. I go water that morning, then I was able to, to bath. So I took my bath early. So once the, the big sounded, I moved and we went to the mami, I mean to the uh, parade ground. We did the early morning, you know, choruses and the likes and praise and worship. And so after the whole thing, I turned and I saw this beautiful girl, the one I saw earlier, the one I told you. I saw her. She was looking, you know, so beautiful. That morning, I don't go lie. And I was like, God, ah. I told myself. There's nothing like dating in this camp. I'm not going to do it. But when I saw this babe, ah, did I change my mind? You're just about to find out in the next episode. You will find out eventually. For now, I'm going to be saying my bias on the show to meet again. In the next episode, I mean, are you daily or learn for me? AKA a bagger. Under this video, you see the subscribe button. You know, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to like, tell a friend, tell a friend. For now, I'm going to be saying my bias. To meet again on the next episode of my journey, my experience of a quite of state. Today, bye.